And how's it going guys? It's Josh Olufemi and guys we have yet again the amazing VFX artist Herman Huang aka Coffee Liquor back on the channel. He is about to give you the most incredible tutorial in the world. Um, it's going to include black light and a lot of random stuff. I'm going to let him explain it to you. There's a lot going on but um, he is coming through from British Columbia, Vancouver up in Canada. It's going to be amazing. Herman, the floor is yours. Thank you as always for the sick introduction, Josh. How's it going guys? It's Herman here and today we're gonna learn how to fake a neon glowing black light effect on any kind of footage that you want. Now this was inspired by a couple sources, one of them being an animated music video by KDA, which I thought was really dope. There would be flashes to this black light scene that was a kick to the optic nerve. Another one being an intro to an anime that I watched called Akadama Drive. And there would be these flashes of this black light revealing these neon glowing paint splatters or blood splatters, which I thought looked really dope. Being into the cyberpunk genre and futuristic aesthetics myself, I knew I had to try this out and this is what I came up with. And now I'll share with you on how you can do it yourself. Just grab your footage and jump over to After Effects. Now, if you don't have any footage to work with, don't worry, we provide you with the project file and the footage that I'll be using in the description below. So be sure to check that out. However, I do recommend that you first watch through the entire tutorial once so that you can bathe in all this new knowledge and just soak it in. And it can be a bit overwhelming at first if you're trying to follow along and watch the tutorial. So I first recommend getting a better understanding of what's happening and then following it along with the uh, project file and the tutorial. So with all that being said, let's cue the transition. Okay, so this is the clip that we'll be using today. If I scrub through it, as you can see, I just flick the card around and then I throw it up in the air, it's slow-mo, then I catch it and then I look deep into your soul. Now, no matter what clip that you're using, it doesn't have to be this one, but you wanna decide what is gonna glow with a black light effect. Now, I'm gonna be sharing with you the overall technique to make things glow in black light, or at least make it look that way, but I'm also gonna cover three different ways for you to reveal the design or article of clothing of your choice. So the first thing we wanna do is drop this clip into a new composition by drag and dropping it into to this icon over here and then we're going to decide what time at what point we're going to have this black light effect but uh, before doing all that i'm actually going to change the composition to something else Control k will be the shortcut to bring up your composition settings we're going to call this uh, main tutorial comp and then we're going to change it to a dimension that i'll be happy with which is 1080 by 1080 because i'm going to be po posting this on uh, instagram Hit OK, and then we're just gonna rescale this and reposition it to something that I like. So this is how I wanna position it so that it looks pleasant and everything's happening in the frame. Now I'm gonna decide when I want the black light effect to happen. So somewhere around here where I'm about to flake the card, I'm gonna hit Control Shift D, which is a shortcut to split the clip and duplicate it like how you can see over here. And it happens where the playhead is. And then we're just gonna find a point where we want the black light effect to stop, which you know around here where I catch the card is a pretty good spot. So hitting the same shortcut, Control Shift D, I split the clip, and then this middle area is where I'm going to, oh, this, this looks really trippy. But we're not making a boomerang, so let me not get off track. This is going to be the area that we'll be uh, applying the black light effect. So I'm going to actually pre-comp this so it's away from everything else and it's you know self-contained and easier to work with. We're gonna hit Control Shift C, which will pre-comp this footage. Uh, move all the attributes into a new composition. Make sure you have that checked. And we're gonna call this the black light moment like this. Hit OK. And then now it's in a new pre-comp. We can, what we can actually do is double click it. And then we're just gonna move it to the very beginning. And then we're gonna trim the overall comp to fit the duration of this moment. In this case, hitting Control K, I'm going to change it to, I believe it's 27 frames like this. And then now this composition is the same duration as the clip. Go back to this main tutorial comp and we're just gonna move that over to that little missing segment so that it plays through. Okay, so now we don't have to worry about the beginning or the ending parts of the clip. We can just work with this pre-composed comp where we want the black light effect to happen. Now, of course, all this stuff is optional. Uh, if you don't need to rescale it to your composition setting or you want the uh, black light effect to happen for the entire clip, then you can totally ignore this, but it does help for you to set all this up beforehand so you get to stay organized and you don't have to worry about it later. Okay, so before we make anything glow, we first need to actually place a black light in the scene or make it look that way. So we're gonna hit a uh, empty space over here. We're gonna right click it. When you go to new and adjustment layer, we're making a new adjustment layer. I want to call this the uh, black light darken like this. And then we're going to slap on an effect. I'm going to use a uh, 
effects console by Video Copilot, which is a free plugin. And it allows me to hit a shortcut control space bar that lets me just search up whatever effects. And all this is, is it just saves me a bit of time from going to the uh, effects and presets panel over here. And I can immediately type in what I want, which in this case is vibrance. Okay, click that. And then we're gonna change the vibrance to something like 80, something fairly high. And then we're gonna change the saturation to something much lower. So negative 60 like this. And then I know it doesn't quite look like a black light yet, but we're going to hit another empty space over here and right click it new and we're going to add a solid over here okay and then we're just going to make a solid that is the color roughly of the black light that we would see if we were actually have uv lights so hitting okay i'm gonna hit okay again and then now we place this solid and then we're going to change the blending mode over here to vivid light like that we're gonna hit t to bring up the opacity and then we're gonna adjust it so that it looks like something that actually looks pretty convincing. So to me, something like this is pretty good. We'll round it up to 35 because that's a nicer number. <laughs> now, if you wanna make any adjustments, for example, if you wanna make it a little more contrasty or you wanna make it a bit darker, then you can go back to this adjustment layer here, hit control space bar in this case, uh, bring up an effect called curves like this. And then we can play with the points over here to kind of brighten it up a little bit but also darken the blacks a little more. So it's a bit of a nice S curve. Uh, we can also, you know what? Let's darken the whole thing a little bit like this. So it actually looks kind of like black light. Now this is gonna, you know, of course, depend on the footage that you're using and up to your taste. But something like this looks pretty convincing to me as if it was actually lit with black light. And once you've set all this up, you are ready to start actually making things glow. So like I said before, you wanna decide what aspect in the shot you want to actually have the neon glow. The first method would be to add a new design and slap that on top. So in this case, I'm gonna go back to uh, this reference comp where I actually did the effect. And you can see that there is a background design over here behind me. And that was added on top of the scene. It's not an actual object that was originally in there like my jacket or my hat or my mask. And as you can also see, it's actually behind me. So I didn't simply slap it on top. I had to cut myself out and then place it on top of the design. So it actually looks like it's behind it. So um, I know this is not what the tutorial is about, but I'm gonna quickly go over how you can cut yourself out so you can place designs behind yourself if you wanna do something like what I just showed. Now there are a lot of ways to do it and you can mix and match these methods as well. The first way is to actually, let me just hide these black light effect layers. The first way is to actually mask yourself, um, especially in something like this. It's quite simple to mask because there's not a lot of movement and a lot of them are sharp edges like this hat and this jacket. You can just use the pen tool and then just mask yourself out and duplicate the layer. But in this case, I'm gonna use uh, a tool called Rotobrush. And if you're familiar with After Effects and you've heard of Rotobrush 2.0 already, then I highly recommend using that because it uses AI to produce better results. But in this case, I don't wanna confuse you guys and jump from one After Effects to another so let's just stay native into this one and use the roto brush tool right over here on the top bar so roto brush tool you can click that now before we actually use the roto brush let's duplicate this layer Control d so we don't affect the uh, footage underneath this top one we'll call it roto and then we're going to set the resolution to high if it's not that way already that way it has more data to give better results and now we're going to double click this layer and then we are ready to use the rotor brush tool. So this plus icon means I'm going to paint in the area that I actually want to include. Just very rough like this. I'm just gonna do my head for now. And then you can also use the refine, if I just click this again, refine edge tool right over here. We're going to paint the edges like this and cover those edges so that it will include the areas that actually should be included and exclude the areas that don't belong there when you're cutting yourself out. So as you can see, the difference in white and the black is what's being included and what's not. And you would basically do this for whatever area that you wanna cut out. And you would also do this while scrubbing forward in your timeline and then making adjustments according to that. But like I said, this is not a rotor brush tutorial, so I won't get too deep into it. But once you're happy with the results, you would hit this freeze button and then it would freeze the clip and then give you something like this. So as you can see, if I were to just hit the transparency grid like so, 
you see that it does a really, really rough job actually because the scene was lit kind of dark and the separation wasn't very clear, which is why you can mix and match the methods instead of just using Roto Brush. Then you can also just mask manually the areas that you want to uh, cut out. So in this case, I was masking with the pen tool and also using the Roto Brush, and then I pre composed whatever I did into uh, one layer so it's easier to see. So if I just double click into that so you can kind of analyze what happened, I had this roto comp and then these were just areas that i masked so that i would include and then i also it also doubles as the areas that i will be um, masking for one of the methods to make the articles of clothing glow so this actually is quite helpful so i ended up using this for two things uh, one to glow later on and one to cut myself out to place in front of the design Hopefully that wasn't too confusing and you're keeping up with me, but ultimately, whatever method that you're using, um, basically you just wanna cut yourself out if you want to place a design behind you. So same thing with a playing card here. So now I have a separation of layers. I have this cutout, which I call cutout, and then I also have this background layer right over here. So if I hide the visibility of this background layer, I get this nice little cutout. So now I'm ready to place the design in the scene. Now I can slap it on top. In this case, I'm placing it behind and whatever design that you're using, it doesn't quite matter. But in this case, I wanna use something from my motion graphic asset pack called Enter the Future. It has a variety of assets I've handcrafted to be used in your commercials, music videos, narrative films, you name it. There's customizable text designs, borders, transitions, overlays. But in this case, I'm gonna grab something from my emblem album right over here. Now I'm gonna use the same one that I used uh, previously, which is emblem number eight. And then if I play that through, it's this. So I'm going to simply drag and drop that in between the two layers. So it looks like it's behind myself. So it's underneath the cutout layer and in front of the background layer. So now it's kind of like this. Now I don't want it to animate, but I would like to keep it kind of like this with the mouth open. In this case, I'm going to right click it, hit time, freeze frame. So now it's not going to be animated. It just stays there in the back. I can always make adjustments to the size and the position. In this case, something like this is what I'm quite happy with. So I'm going to turn on the black light effect layers, which was this adjustment layer and also the solid, right? I'm going to hit the eye icon on the left side. And already it looks pretty interesting. It looks kind of like it's in the scene glowing in black light. However, not everything under black light will glow the same way. So in this case, I don't want it to take the attention away from the other glowing elements. I just want it to kind of be in the background to add to the tone. So in this case, I'm going to add a new effect called tint like this. And then we're gonna tint the white to something kind of purpley, kind of like this. We can change the color a little bit more. And then now it doesn't really take much attention away, but I'm going to change the blending mode to something like screen. Okay, so it's a little bit brighter. And then we're gonna add a bit of a, a blur because it doesn't make sense that it's so sharp if it's actually in the background and in the scene. So I'm going to add fast box blur. I'm gonna change the blur radius to something like 0.5. So it's slightly blurred and doesn't take too much attention away. And if you want it to look kind of glowy under the black light, you can always duplicate this layer by hitting Control D, adding a new effect, which is glow, something like this. And then we can just play with the radius like that. And also the intensity. We can also make the second layer blur a little more. So it looks like it's uh, kind of glowing in the background. We can always hit T as well. So we can bring up the opacity and just change that to something a little bit lower. And as you can see, now it looks kind of like a glowing design behind myself, which is pretty dope. So that is the first way for you to add a design into the scene and make it kind of look like it's glowing under black light. Now we're also gonna be learning how to actually make uh, certain things glow more vibrantly. But before we do that, I wanna move into the second part of method one. It's the same idea, but in this case, we're gonna be slapping the design on top of an object. So in this case, it's gonna be my mask. So if I bring up this effect, it'll be this design over here on my mask. So what if your subject is moving around? What if, you know, it's not a static background like where I'm placing this design where it's a wall and you know, there's no camera shake or anything like that. So I don't need to worry about movement. But in this case, if I wanna add something to my mask, then my mask is moving and I'm gonna need to track it. So I'm gonna just hide everything except for the background layer like this. So it's a little bit easier to see. And then I'm gonna pre-compose this bottom layer by hitting Control Shift C so it's contained and it will match the composition setting as this one that we're working in. We're just call this the base layer like this. And then now we're gonna track it. So I'm gonna add an effect called Mocha. Mocha is such a powerful tool that allows you to track objects. So we're going to hit this big shiny Mocha button here and it's gonna bring up the Mocha window or the program here. And then we're just going to use this tool here. It's a pen with an X, it's the X spline tool. And then we're going to 
just zoom in a little bit. I'm holding Z to be able to do that or Z for you Canadians. I'm actually Canadian as well, so I'm not sure why I said Z. Um, we're going to draw the area that you want to track. So in this case, it's going to be my mask. So I'm just drawing the strap along with the mask itself. And then we're going to track backwards like this by hitting this icon, go to the middle, track to the right. If I zoom out, as you can see, the entire thing is tracked in my mask. Very crisp track. We're gonna hit Control S so that we save this. We're going to, you can rename this if you want, but this is the only layer, so we don't need to worry about it. As you can tell, I like renaming things and trying to stay organized whenever I can. And we're gonna create something called a null object. You can right click a empty space like this, go to new, go to null object, and then we're gonna rename this to track, like so. Take the space layer over here where it has the mocha effect that we just tracked, go to tracking data, create track data and we're going to select the layer that we actually you know did some tracking on so we're going to hit okay because it's the only layer that we actually work with we're going to change the export options here on the left to transform and then layer export to track which is the null object that we just created basically what we're doing is we're applying the tracking data over to this layer so when we hit this big button apply export the magic has happened you can see that in this layer if I highlight it and hit U, which is the shortcut to show all the keyframes, you can see that there are these lovely keyframes for the position, scale, and rotation. Now you are ready to add a new design. Now, in this case, I'm going to use another thing from my digital product, and we're gonna use this first one that says future, like this. Looks pretty rad. People don't say rad anymore, do they? I hope saying that doesn't make you stop watching this tutorial, but basically we're gonna drag and drop this on top of everything else. And we're just gonna to scrub to the point where I want to freeze because I don't want it to animate. You could always have your designs animate if you'd like. In this case, I'm just gonna freeze it so it's a little bit easier to see. Right click, go to time, freeze frame. Exactly the same way as what we did for the background design. So now that we've done this, we're going to actually rescale this by hitting S to bring up the scale. And then I'm going to hit this button, which is toggle switches in mode because I wanna bring up the option where I can turn this into a 3D layer, which is this. Uh, button over here. So if I hit this empty space under this column, which is 3D layer, it allows it to be a 3D layer, as the name suggests, and we're gonna hit R, which brings up the rotation. And then we're just gonna rotate it kind of like this. And then reposition it like so. We can always rescale it and make further refinements however we wish. And then what's gonna happen is we're going to parent it over to the null object. So this little pick whip over here, we're gonna hold it down and we're gonna drag it over to this track layer, just like that. And then now it's gonna take that data and it's going to be pinned onto the mask. Pretty insane, right? Now in this case, because I don't want it to look like it's digitally slapped on, which is exactly what is happening right now, I wanna make it look like it's part of the scene and actually part of the mask. So uh, there's a couple things that you can do. You can apply a new effect called the mesh warp, I believe. Yep, just like this. And then we're gonna change the rows and columns to something, not as many, maybe something like six. And then we're going to actually adjust this so it looks like it's part of the fabric. So when a design is on a fabric like this, it'll stretch and pull and have imperfections, so I'm going to simulate that by playing around these parameters like this. And then just this top part because my nose would be there to kind of bevel it on top. And just play around with it until it's something that you're happy with. And this is kind of what it looks like. And of course it's leaking past the mask. If I hide the visibility of this, the mask ends over here. So you'll have to mask that area by uh, using a mat. But I'm gonna actually circle back on this because we're gonna be using something else that I'll be teaching you later uh, to finish this effect off. But for now, this is the very basic uh, understanding of how to track a design onto an article of clothing. So I'm just gonna hide this and don't worry, I'm gonna circle back to this. But we're ready to move on to method two. Now method two, I'm gonna still use this mask and as an example, instead of let's say adding this design over here, we wanna make the whole mask glow as an example. Then what you can do is create a mask for this uh, this mask. Oh, that was really weird to say. I actually confused myself for a second. So for this face mask, you would have to mask it with the pen tool to animate the keyframes and follow along with the motion of this. Or you could use Roto Brush like I taught you earlier. And basically what you're doing is you're isolating the articles of clothing that you want to glow. So in this example, it would be the mask. If that's a bit confusing to understand, let me just show you. Let's take the space layer here. 
We're going to hit Control D to duplicate it. We're going to right click it, call it Face Mask. Okay. And then starting from around here, I'm going to take the pen tool. Okay. I'm going to use the method of manually masking. And then we're going to draw the area that we want to glow. So in this case, right over here, like this, I'm going to do a bit of a rough job so you get the idea. But of course, it goes without saying that uh, the more time that you spend on it, the more refined it'll look. Just like that, we got this first frame. Okay. I'm going to hit M and that will bring up the mass path. And I'm going to hit the stopwatch. We'll just start keyframing the moments that uh, I want to animate. So around here, this point, I'm going to move all my keyframes so that it will be animated. Okay. You don't have to necessarily do this frame by frame because it'll automatically fill in the animation between the keyframes, which is very smart of After Effects. As you can see right over here, it fills it in. And then you can always make adjustments over here. Let's say it missed this little part and then you can make refinements. But as I said before, the more time that you spend on it, the better the results. And you're gonna do this for the entire clip. Okay, so this is what it looks like now that I've roughly masked it. I'm just doing a really rough job for the tutorial sake. But what we're gonna do is apply an effect called fill. And what that does is it's gonna fill the entire layer with a solid color. So in this case, I want it to be something like, eh, I don't know, what's what's neon-y? Okay, let's make, it, let's make it green actually, like this. Okay, and then we're going to actually change the blending mode to something else. So we're gonna hit this button, switches, uh, toggle switches in mode, so that we can bring up this column here and we're gonna change it to classic color dodge. And the reason that I wanna do that is that it may not be apparent over here right now, but if I turn on the black light effect layers, which are these two ones over here, it's still not quite apparent, but it'll show a little bit of the texture or the design underneath. And that's what you want uh, to show for the jacket if you do it over here, so you can see a little bit of this logo. Or if you wanna do it for this t-shirt, you would see a bit of the t-shirt design or even this hat, which I will show you later. But you wanna choose classic color dodge and then you wanna duplicate this by hitting control D and then placing this above both of the black layer effect layers so that it's not affected by these two adjustments. And then we're ready to add a glow so it looks like it's actually glowing in black light. Now you can do this with your favorite method. In this case, you can use the built-in glow effect in After Effects and then just kind of play with the radius and also the intensity. And then it'll look something kind of like this. I can also duplicate this glow by hitting Control D and then just playing with the parameters like this and then changing the intensity so it looks like it's actually glowing. And then we'll change the blending mode now, now that it's on top of these black light effects, we're gonna change it to screen and it gives a more even glow. And then now you can actually make those adjustments and see what kind of result it gives, kind of like this. And then you can hit T to bring up the opacity and then just bring it to something like 80% so it's not so intense. The same thing for the face mask underneath hit T and then bring it to something like 60. And then now you can start seeing a bit of that texture underneath the mask, as you can see, that stretchy texture. And then this, you basically apply this to any other article of clothing that you want to glow. In this case, let's say the jacket, you would be able to see the logo, as I mentioned before, or the hat, you would see the logo and the texture of this as well. And if you have trouble seeing anything while the effect is applied, because everything is quite dark now, you can go to this little iris looking, exposure looking icon. I really don't know what it's called, but if you bring it up, you can bring up the exposure so you can see what's in the dark. And this is great for when you're masking or making adjustments and you can't really see, but you can always reset it by hitting the icon again, and then it'll reset it back to its original form. So I'm just dropping some nuggets of knowledge here and there so that it can make your life a little bit easier when you're trying this out yourself. But essentially, as you can see, the mask effect looks kind of like this when it's animated. And like I said, you can always play with the opacity so that it looks a little more realistic and, you know, less apparent so something like this might look a little more convincing that's actually black light and these edges over here as i mentioned the more time that you spend masking it the better the result but in this case i'm not going to actually make the mask glow if you look back into my reference comp over here all i did was add the design over here so that now leads me to circling back to that mask design that i was talking about earlier instead of using this masked out layer to actually make the mask glow i'm going to use it as a mat so that it doesn't make the design spill out of the mask so what i mean by that is i'm going to first delete this glow layer and then for this mask layer over here i'm going to change it back to 100 change the blending mode to normal because we're not going to actually see this layer anymore i'll even delete the effect and what's going to happen is i'm going to place this right on top of the design that I want to 
uh, apply the effect. And then I'm going to hide the visibility of it. And then I'm going to turn on the visibility of this uh, design that was on the mask like this. Okay. And then we're going to go over here, the column with the track mat, and then we're going to change it to alpha mat. And then now whatever that we masked earlier for the face mask is going to be used as a bit of a cutout so that this design does not leak past what we masked out. So they kind of go back and refresh you on what's happening here because we're working with a lot of layers. I can understand if this can be a bit confusing and hard to follow. So I'm just gonna work with these two clips right now. But right now what we're trying to achieve is to add this design on the mask. And then we're using the layer that we animated earlier with the pen tool like this. If I just show you that layer and isolate it, as you can see, it's simply just the mask itself. And then what's happening is we're taking this layer underneath this uh, design over here that we want to place on the mask. And we change the track mat to alpha mat, which actually means that we're taking the layer on top and then only showing the parts that are not transparent. So in this case, as you can see, everything is transparent except for the mask itself. So that's why if I hide this layer, it only is contained in the area that is not transparent, which is the mask. So now when I play it through, since it's also tracked, it actually looks like it's part of the mask. Now, of course, there are some refinements that can be made. So in this case, as you can see, if I play it through, the design kind of drifts over to the right. So you can always keyframe this with the position or you can make adjustments to the mesh warp. So in this case, if I do like distortion mesh like this, and then I were to go forward like that, and I don't like how that was leaking back in. So I'm just gonna push it back over, like, like maybe like this, just a little bit. And now it looks a little bit better. And now we're gonna apply everything that I taught you earlier to make this actually glow. So we're gonna take both of these, okay? We're gonna actually change them to a different color. Let's make it purple, okay? And then we're gonna put it underneath uh, over here. So it's underneath these black light layers. We're gonna actually make these, uh, okay, we'll make these purple because it's black light kind of like black light because black light is kind of like purpley blue. And then we're gonna change the face mask layers to something like cyan, okay? So it's a little bit less confusing. So remember what I taught earlier, we're gonna take this layer, okay? We're gonna kind of ignore this uh, face mask layer. We're gonna take this design layer, change the mode to classic color dodge, just as a bit of a refresher on what's happening. We're gonna change the opacity by hitting T to something like 50 or maybe 60, kind of like that. So we still see a bit of the texture of the mask. And then we're going to take these two layers when hit control D, so we duplicate it. We're gonna actually change the color to something like, I don't know, orange because it's glowing. And we're gonna place these on top of the black light effect layers, which were these two ones. Okay, as long as it's on top, we're good. And we're gonna change this blending mode now to screen, and then we're gonna add a glow. Now, we can use the built-in effect. So we're gonna play around with it until it looks like it's actually kind of glowing. Hit control D so they can duplicate it. And this is really intense and you can always play around with the parameters and also hit T so you can play with the opacity. Now in this case, I didn't add a fill layer so that it looks kind of like white, but if you want to change the color, okay, what can happen is we're going to go back to the face mask underneath the uh, black light layers like this, and then we can add in fill, change it to whatever color that you like. In this case, let's make it cyan. Since we made the color over here cyan, why not? We're gonna hit control C to copy it and then we're going to hit control V to paste it. And then this can go uh, on top of all this glow layer. So it applies the fill first before applying the glows. Now I'm gonna de delete these glow layers because I wanna introduce something new. Uh, hopefully this is not gonna be too overwhelming, but a plugin that I like to use is called Deep Glow, which gives uh, really beautiful light fall off uh, when you're applying the glow. However, this is a paid plugin. So that's why I wanted to teach you with the glow effect that's built into After Effects first. But now I wanna introduce you to another option that will save you a bit of time and also give you accurate light fall off. So it looks kind of like this. And then you can adjust the opacity to whatever you think will look realistic. But this is essentially what it looks like right now. If I place the one underneath like this, and then also include the visibility of the cutout over here. So it looks like it's actually behind it. As you can see, it's looking pretty convincing so far. Not bad, not bad. We've covered two methods for you to add a glowing design under blacklight. So still using method two, let's say that you want to make the jacket glow. So as I mentioned before, as a refresher, you can use the rotor brush tool or you can use the pen tool to manually mask the area or the object that you want to glow. So in this case, 
I actually did one called jacket like this. And then I animated, as you can see, if I hit M to bring up all the keyframes, I animated the movements of the jacket so that it covers the jacket. And then exactly the same thing as what I did before, we changed the blending mode to classic color dodge. And then we're going to add a fill for the color of choice that we would like to change it to. Let's say it's something like cyan. Okay, like this. We're gonna hit T so we can change the opacity to something that lets me see the texture underneath. Now it's not glowing yet because we are going to be duplicating it by hitting control D. Actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna be a bit OCD and just make it cyan like everything else. And then we're gonna hit control D. Now we're gonna bring it on top of the black light effects like this. So now it's not affected by the black light effect and it's not too dark. Change the blending mode to screen now. And then we are now able to add a glow. In this case, I'm gonna use the newly introduced plugin called Deep Glow like this. And then we'll play with the opacity. Let's make it something like 30. And if I play through it now, it looks like it's glowing under black light. Now I can always change the parameters of this deep glow so that the radius is not too high. So it's something like that. Change the exposure to like something like this and then change the opacity to something else like that, or maybe 50 if it's too bright. And now it's totally up to your taste on what changes you wanna make and what refinements you wanna make, but that is essentially the procedure and the steps for you to make something glow under black light. Now the third method that I wanna go over, I'm just gonna hide everything except for the base layer, is if there is an existing design on your clothing or the object that you want to glow. So in this case, let's say that I wanted this design here, this logo for the shirt to uh, actually glow. Now, I'm not gonna go too in depth of it. I just wanna talk through on how you can do it, uh, especially if it's a simpler design, then I recommend it. And I also recommend it if it is a design that isn't moving around too much and it's not the shirt where it's gonna be like warping around like this. If it's something like a hat, this would actually work quite great. And if it was facing towards you, but I wanna walk through this method in case you find yourself wanting an existing design to glow. Now, this isn't gonna work perfectly, but I'm gonna use this as an example. If you actually highlight this layer like this, and then I'm gonna duplicate it and just call it something like reference, uh, reference logo like this. I'm gonna jump to the beginning actually. And then I'm going to mask the area that I actually want to include like this. And then we're just going to hide everything else except for this. And then a tool I want to introduce you to is actually called uh, Auto Trace. And I believe it's under layer over here. Go to Auto Trace and then it'll bring up a window like this. And then basically what it can do is take the luminance value of whatever that you're, uh, whatever's in the layer, which in this case would be the brighter parts, the darker parts of the area, and it'll trace around it and create new masks. Uh, so if I hit okay, like this, it'll make a new layer like this and it'll trace around your design. Now, of course, uh, if I delete this and go back to layer and auto trace, you can change the tolerance and the threshold to give you different results and give more accurate results. So I suggest that you play around with that. And I'm just gonna do it again so you can see. And then basically whatever's white here would be, you know, hopefully the logo. In this case, like I said, it's not a very good example of what I'm using right now. It's quite intricate and not enough light, but I do wanna talk about this option for you in case you find yourself in that situation. So you would use the exact same method. You can add a, you know, add a fill to like change the color. And then you would change the blending mode to classic color dodge, play with the opacity, duplicate it, place it on top of your black light effects and then add a glow. And then using the methods that I taught you, this is essentially what it looks like when you mix and match the techniques. So the first one being the mask over here, which I went over already. This was a jacket, which is the same idea where there's a layer for the underlying layer under the black light effect and then one on top for it to glow. Uh, so you know how to do that. And then this over here, the pill logo also from my enter the future digital product was slapped on top very similar to this mask over here so all i did was i tracked this logo and then i added this design so it looks like a new design is revealed under the uv light which i think is pretty cool and then for this hat that's glowing exactly the same method as i taught you for the jacket all i did was mask the hat and then use the exact same method and then for this playing card I actually didn't mask it i used the roto brush tool that i taught you earlier so that i can isolate the playing card and then use the same neon glowing method and then after sprinkling a little more for my pack this is what it ends up looking like overall 
And there you have it guys, a creative way to make your next video dope. Now, if you find that one of the methods is a little bit tough to do at first, you know, don't worry, I provided you a variety of ways for you to implement the effect, so I do encourage you to go ahead and try them out. Now, be sure to tag both Josh and myself on what you come up with because we're always excited to see what you guys do and where you guys take the knowledge that we share with you. Now, if you're into futuristic aesthetics like I am and you need an arsenal of tools to make your next video stand out, then check out the motion graphic asset pack that I mentioned earlier. It's called Enter the Future. And thanks to both the amazing Will and Josh, we provide you an unlimited license so you can use this as many times as you wish on whatever project that you want. It comes with pre-rendered 4K assets that you can simply drag and drop into your favorite editing software. And it also comes with a customizable After Effects file along with Mogret files for you Premiere Pro users like myself. Of course, stay tuned to the Olufemi channel if you don't want to miss the next tutorial from both Josh and myself. If you want to see what I'm up to, check out my Instagram page. It's at Coffee Liquor. So again, guys, my name is Herman. And until the next tutorial, let's bring it back over to Josh. Herman, thank you so much for yet another incredible tutorial. Please make sure to like this video and to share this video with whoever you think may want to see it and subscribe to the channel as well. Please make sure to remember to check out Herman's incredible ETF pack. That's what we call it. Enter the future. Um, I've been using it a lot and it's been freaking amazing. So guys, thank you again for watching the video and remember to keep it chill.